A carburetor overhaul, or let's refer to it as a tune-up, isn't as difficult as many people think. The tools you will need to perform a typical carburetor tune-up include a 3 8 drive socket set, a set of combination wrenches, a set of screwdrivers, pliers including a standard and needle nose type, the correct size of flare nut wrench, usually 9 16 or 5 8 some masking tape and a marker, and for final adjustments, a hand vacuum pump, a vacuum gauge, and a tacked wall meter. For cleaning, we suggest having a can of aerosol carburetor spray, a bucket of carburetor cleaner to soak the parts in, and a source or air pressure for blowing out clogged passages. In addition to the new carb tune-up kit, we suggest installing a new float assembly, choke pull-off, and choke thermostat. Now is also a good time to install a clean fuel filter, air filter, and PCV valve to ensure maximum performance gains from your work. When purchasing a carb kit, it is often helpful if you have the carburetor identification number or tag number with you. On Rochester carburetors, you can usually find this number on the main body section. On Holly carburetors, the ID number can be found on the air horn or main body section. On most Ford carburetors, it will be located on a tag. And on Carter carburetors, you can find it on a tag or stamped into the main body section or base plate assembly. The first step is to remove the air cleaner. Tag any vacuum lines or linkages with masking tape and a marker to ensure proper hookup during reassembly. Now's a good time to inspect any fuel lines or vacuum hoses and replace any that are brittle or cracked. Disconnect the fuel line from the carb. If it is a steel line, use the double wrench method utilizing a flare nut wrench on the line fitting and a backup wrench on the carburetor fitting. Now remove the carburetor mounting bolts. Usually there are two or four of them and remove the carburetor from the intake manifold. Remove the carburetor base gasket and clean the carb mounting surface of the manifold. Disassembly should be performed in an orderly fashion. We recommend following the exploded view and parts numbering sheet included with your carb tune-up kit. In our example, we next remove the fuel filter inlet fitting and remove the fuel filter from its cavity. Be sure not to loosen the small spring that positions the filter in its base. Next, we remove the idle stop solenoid, the choke pull-off, and the choke thermostat. Make sure to note the position of the choke thermostat before removing it. Solenoids, dash pots, choke pull-offs, or thermostats should not be immersed in the carburetor solution. Clean these items as necessary with a cloth and spray carburetor cleaner. If so equipped, turn the idle mixture screws all the way in, counting the number of revolutions as you do so. Make note of how many revolutions so you can use that figure as a starting point during reassembly. Next, remove the air horn screws and lightly tap on the air horn to loosen the seal of the gasket. Remove it from the main body. Remove the air horn gasket, but do not discard it at this time as you will need it to match up to the new one later. Begin soaking parts in carburetor cleaner once removed. In our example, we next remove the choke housing, the power valve or metering rods, and the needle and seat. During disassembly, be careful to note the location of any check balls, such as the accelerator pump check ball shown. Lastly, remove the base plate screws and separate the base plate from the main body. Allow the parts to soak in the carburetor parts cleaner. Generally, about an hour will remove tarnish and foreign materials. Remember, do not soak any electrical, vacuum, or plastic parts in the cleaner. Drain all the parts into your container and blow dry with compressed air. This will not only dry off the parts, but also use the compressed air to blow out small passages to dislodge tarnish and foreign materials. If you don't have compressed air available, a less favorable method is to use an aerosol type carb spray to clear passages. Because some carburetor tune-up kits come with additional gaskets, make sure to compare the new and old gaskets to assure correct replacement. With all the parts clean and laid out in order on your work surface, you are ready to begin reassembly. 
Begin by installing a new gasket between the main body and the base and tighten the screws accordingly. Reinstall any check balls that may have been removed earlier. The new needle and seat assembly may appear slightly different than the one removed. Install it as per the instructions with your kit. Next, refer to the instruction sheet provided for the correct float adjustment procedure on your particular carburetor. Holding the new float in place, invert the carburetor and measure the distance between the top of the main body and the top of the float with the float gauge supplied. If the adjustment is incorrect, gently adjust the float tab, reinstall it, and double check the float level. Do not assume the float adjustment will be correct. Install the float retainer, reposition the metering rods, and install the choke housing. In our example, we also had to install a new accelerator pump seal prior to reinstalling the accelerator pump in the main body. Carefully install the air horn and start all screws by hand to prevent cross-threading. Tighten all the screws evenly once installed. Install the new choke thermostat and adjust it as per the specifications detailed in the instructions. If you remove them during disassembly, reinstall the secondary metering rods. Reinstall the idle mixture screws. Turn them all the way in and then back them out the same number of revolutions as counted when they were originally removed. Reinstall the choke pull-off and tighten the screws securely. Then reinstall the idle stop solenoid and the fuel filter, spring, and fitting. Be sure the open end of the fuel filter faces the fuel line. 